in this section we are going to discuss about various deployment strategies in any point platform basically this section will help you to design and document physical view of your application so actually any point platform provides us with various applications and services they are design center API manager, runtime manager, uh, monitoring service, monitoring, and also various services like object store service, cloud hub logging service. Like that it has various services and various applications if you log into any point platform whatever you see here on the left menu design center exchange access management api manager runtime manager visualizer monitoring secrets manager these all are applications and there are services so these all applications together we call them as control plane okay because these applications allow us to control the deployed applications so basically any point platform can be logically divided into two parts control plane and runtime plane runtime plane is a place where we have our mule runtimes and our deployed applications run inside runtime plane and through control plane we can actually control the deployed applications deployed on the runtime plane in any point platform we have various options for runtime planes what are they so one option is cloud hub cloud hub is nothing but a mule soft hosted runtime plane and uses cloud based infrastructure right cloud hub is actually a runtime plan and there are other customer hosted runtime plans these are provisioned and managed by the customers there are three types again uh, runtimes directly managed by customers that means if i'm directly starting my mule runtime and deploying applications on my premise that the first category or there is another thing called as any point runtime fabric we'll discuss in detail about it and also any point platform private cloud edition and there are other things also like any point platform for pcf pivotal cloud foundry but we'll discuss about these three options here okay so first of, first of all let us discuss about cloud hub this will give a very good overview about other runtime planes also so actually cloud hub is a platform as a service as you know and it is especially integration platform as a service and this cloud hub is installed on top of aws infrastructure so cloud hub is installed on top of AWS and in multiple regions of AWS okay for each application instance whatever we deploy a new virtual machine is provisioned with a separate mule runtime that virtual machine is what we call as cloud hub worker that means if I'm deploying an application and if my application needs five instances that means five virtual machines or five workers are sp spawned up by cloud hub right so you can see the architecture of cloud hub it says it has two major components one is the any point platform services or rest apis as i told you the services rest apis services and rest apis right 
and the worker cloud right so you can see uh, these are the platform services the rest apis provided by cloud hub by using cloud hub we can see the application data we can actually see the business events in the inside tab logging service alert service these all are rest apis in cloud hub and worker cloud this is nothing but vms provisioned in a vpc virtual private cloud so these are the two major components of cloud hub architecture so let us see what will happen in cloud hub uh, let me take this picture here yep. and yeah so you can see here um, my applications water we deploy will be running in a virtual private cloud cloud hub is already having a virtual private cloud and this is a shared worker cloud we say shared vpc that means if you are using plain cloud hub multiple multiple organizations also might be having accounts right so all the applications deployed by organization 1 organization 2 etc everything will be deployed inside this shared vpc so right now i have my my own uh, any point platform account here whatever applications i deployed actually my organization name i gave as uh, w2l way to learn and inside my organization i have deployed let's say these all apps and your organization you also have your own login and your organization and if you have deployed all the applications will be deployed into this shared vpc and suppose if you are having two instances suppose if you are having two instances for your application there will be a load balancer in front a public shared load balancer this is a shared load balancer okay so from public internet how to access our applications deployed onto this vpc you have to hit the load balancer whatever url you are getting for your application let's take an example here i deployed this application this is a url right using which we hit so whenever i'm hitting this url uh, let me hit it slash i have products in my app so actually i am hitting load balancer okay c is missing sorry actually i am hitting the load balancer and this load balancer the what is the pattern here followed app name dot cloud up dot io here if you see app name dot actually this is a region name in which my instance is deployed in cloud hub and this is cloud up dot io right so this is the pattern app name dot region name dot cloud up dot io the request will come to load balancer and one thing you need to consider when deploying applications to cloud hub is your http port should be configured using a placeholder called as dollar http dot host or if you are using https dollar https dot host so when you deploy your application to cloud hub this http.host by default will be replaced with 8081 if you are using http and if you are using https this will be replaced by 8082 okay so whenever request like this comes to load balancer what it will do is it will hit your application instances using a internal url like mule dash worker dash app name whatever we have here dot cloud up dot io colon the corresponding port 
So that's how the load balancer will actually hit. Right? Again, if you are having multiple instances, it will do the load balancing among them. Right? Let me try to hit this URL also. Actually, this URL also is made public. If you want to hit your instances directly by bypassing the load balancer, you will be able to do so. So let me go here. Here, this is the URL, right? So what I'll do is I'll paste this URL and here before this I'll write mule dash worker dash app name. Oh, here I need to give the port 8081. So this will give me the same result. So here what I'm doing, I'm hitting my application by bypassing the load balancer, right? And there is one more DNS also called as mule dash worker dash internal dash app name. And you can use a port called as 8091 or 8092 for communicating internally. That means within the VPC, you will be your workers will be able to talk using this URL. Okay. So this is how shared worker cloud looks like. And what you can do is in Cloud Hub, you can also provision your own VPC. So let me copy here again. You can have your own VPC. How to create your own VPC? If you go to any point runtime manager, there is VPC section. Right? Here, there are no VPCs right now because I am on a trial account. I cannot create VPCs right right now I am in an organization called as W2L I am at the organization level and I don't I didn't go to any business group so I don't have I have zero VPCs but if I have license I might have uh, taken license for a number of VPCs I'll be able to create a VPC similarly you can also configure your own dedicated load balancer also right uh, the load balancer whatever i showed you is a shared load balancer what if you want to configure your own certificates https certificates you cannot use a shared load balancer so in such cases you need to go ahead, go ahead with a dedicated load balancer for your own VPC. So in runtime manager, through runtime manager, you will be able to create a VPC and also a load balancer. So actually, if I directly go to VPCs, it is not, this button is not enabled, right? But if I go to load balancer, here there's a link to create a VPC. Maybe I guess this is some problem with uh, any point platform runtime manager actually this also should be disabled but if i click on it right it will show this wizard but this button will never be enabled anyway just i want you to see a vpc wizard you can give your own vpc name shiva vpc and in which region you want to create this vpc here uh, again uh, only lower case okay siva vpc okay so again if i go to here i'll be able i should be able to select the regions right actually it is disabled because i don't have license i am in trial and you can specify the ip ranges by using something called a cidr block and you can select the environments you want this vpc to belong to which environment and then business groups also then here you can configure firewall rules see by default the firewall rules are whitelisting this port on all the ips 0.0.0 slash .0, 0 means all ips this 8081 and 8082 are whitelisted and this is one more thing, private ports, 8091 and 8092. These private ports are only for the local VPC. That means within the VPC, they should be able to communicate using this ports, as I told you here, right? 
you can use mule dash worker dash internal dash app name and the port is 8091 or 8092 so within vpc you will be able to communicate using these ports 8091 and 8092 and you can also uh, assign your own uh, dns your own domains etc these all can be done okay so that's how we can create a shared vpc and we can configure firewall rules you can whitelist uh, you can whitelist whatever ports you want whatever is not whitelisted here is blacklisted right okay so now coming back uh, to here as I told you you can have your own uh, dedicated VPC and also dedicated load balancer in your VPC you can configure firewalls then <coughs> what you can also do is from your VPC custom VPC you will be able to establish a tunnel or VPN to your direct data center right you can see this here uh, let me copy this picture to here i'll explain you yeah so now assume that this is um this is your data center and uh, here is your v this is your whole vpc and in your vpc you have a dedicated load balancer once you configure a dedicated load balancer your dedicated load balancer can be accessed using this one this is the dns link record what is it load balancer name whenever you are configuring a load balancer in runtime manager here will be giving a name so that load balancer name dot lb dot any point dns dot name this is the dns record slash app name so suppose if my app name is x then how to hit my app through this dedicated load balancer we can give http colon lb name dot lb dot any point dns dot net slash x so it will route it to my application right and also uh, what you can do is you can map your own domains also as i showed you whenever you are configuring in lb actually there's a way to configure your own domain instead of using uh, uh, cloudup.io or anypointdns.net since you configured your own dedicated load balancer you will be actually able to map your own domains so assuming that you have your own domain you can hit your application using api.yourowndomain.com slash app name right and what you can do is you can configure uh, a vpn between this vpc between this vpc and your data center can configure a vpn and you can use some protocols like ipsec or you can use vpc peering to actually peer both uh, vpcs if you are uh, using uh, AWS, you can use VPC peering as well, right? So you can connect this VPC with your own uh, data center using a VPN and you can communicate using this protocols. So how can uh, this VPC and your data center communicate? They can communicate using this internal dns record mule dash worker dash internal dash app name right so like that in cloud hub what you can do is you can create your own vpc and you can have your own dedicated load balancer and you can deploy your applications to your own vpc and if your applications running on cloud hub needs to talk to your own data center and if you are having your own databases in your own data center what you have to do you have to configure a vpn between this vpc and your data center 
and use some protocols like IPsec for transferring the data securely between the data center and your VPC. Okay, few more things I want to tell you about Cloud Hub. Actually, you'll be using Log4j for your app in your applications, right? So in your log4j, you will configure where to write the logs. So what you can do is, by default, there is a rolling file appender where it is configured to write the logs to a local file. When you deploy your application to Cloud Hub, this is overridden and it will configure an appender which will send your logs to a service called as cloud hub logging service okay so uh, just see this one this is your runtime plane where your mule applications are running on aws here is your vm on aws where my mule application is running so this we call it as runtime plane is it in control plane I told that there are a lot of services. There is one service called as Cloud Hub Logging Service. Whenever your application is deployed to Cloud Hub, whatever you have written in your log4j2.xml will be overridden and it will configure an appender which will send the logs to Cloud Hub Logging Service. Right? So all the logs are going to Cloud Hub logging service. And then in your runtime manager, you are seeing the logs of the application right here. In runtime manager, if I go to applications, if I go to my application, you can see the logs here, right? These logs, actually the runtime manager is retrieving from the Cloud Hub service, right? So that you need to understand. And one more thing is in your application, if you are using something like object stores. So uh, object stores, suppose if you are running your application on an on-premise mule runtime, object store is persisted to file if you make the object store as persistent. And um, if you are working with on-premise, and if you are using a cluster of mule runtimes, as I told you, cluster of mule runtimes will be internally using Hazel cast virtual distributed shared memory. So the object store will be actually created here. But whereas in Cloud Hub, there is one more service called as object store service object store service v2 actually there was old version v1 and now it is object store service v2 so in your application if you are using object store connector and if you have deployed your application onto cloud up that object store connector will automatically connect to object store service to persist the data, right? So these are the changes which you need to notice when you are deploying to Cloud Hub. If you are running on-premise, the object stores will be created uh, either in Hazelcast shared memory if you are having a cluster or if you are having a single mule runtime, they are persisted to local machine local files even logs and object stores are written to local machine by default is it but if you are using cloud up there are services like logging service and object store service 